Upon arrival at the George Bush Intercontinental Airport in Houston, Texas, on a journey to shoot this documentary, one that sets out to capture how law enforcement, especially policing, is done in the U.S., and the transformation that has occurred in the country's security setup, we were served with a dose of what to expect. Unfortunately, that incident was not caught on tape because our tool of documenting events, the camera, was the item involved. Our cameraman was held for some time by U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents for not exposing his camera during checks at the point of entry while checking in for a connecting flight to New York. This tells of how sensitive the system has become in recent times. The products that you're allowed to bring are always changing and the, the rules are always changing, so it's important to check all the time. No doubt, one event that changed the face of security and law enforcement in the United States was the September 11, 2001 coordinated attacks on the World Trade Center where about 3,000 people were killed. Dan Perla works in the stock market on Wall Street, and Clifford Channing, the director of education and program at the 9-11 Memorial, share with us the story of how it happened. So the attack of September 11, 2001, began at 8.46 on a Tuesday morning, when the first plane that had been hijacked Flight 11 of American Airlines hit the North Tower between the 93rd and the 98th floors. Then the second plane hit the south face of the South Tower at 9.03 that morning. In fact, because that second plane hit lower in the South Tower, it was the South Tower that collapsed first at 9.58 on that morning. Then at 10.28, the collapse of the North Tower followed. So it was really in quick succession that these events happened here in New York. Meanwhile, two other flights had been hijacked, one that hit the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and one that was headed back to Washington. It was over Pennsylvania when the passengers and crew tried to recapture that flight, and the flight was crashed in a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. I worked in the stock market in the finance world, so it was just after, not long after Labor Day weekend, things were starting to pick up again. And I remember being at my desk by approximately 8.30, when shortly thereafter, a news blurb hit the tape, the news tape, which I was following, that a plane had struck the World Trade Center. And it looked, to the best of my knowledge, and to the best of their knowledge, that a very small plane had hit. And we all assumed at that point that it was simply an accident, that somehow a plane had gone into the towers. But it was strange that on such a beautiful, clear day, a plane could have gone into the towers. When all of a sudden we saw that second plane, the shadow of that second plane hit the towers. Um, and after that, we understood what had transpired. Today, the Twin Towers have returned to the beautiful skyline of New York. And a National September 11 Memorial set up to immortalize the victims amidst improved security. Are not something we can really speak to in detail, but what I can just give you as a general overview of what you're seeing at the entire World Trade Center site. Sarah Lipman is a communications manager at the Memorial. The a job four, description requires her to like interact with able, visitors here on a daily basis. She describes the feeling of being here every time. I mean, for me personally, um, working here on a daily basis, it's actually pretty inspiring to see people from all over the world coming here on a daily basis and just to recognize how many people, you know, this event really affected. Um, it's eye-opening and it sort of restores your faith in humanity that people have really kept that promise to never forget. So while, you know, it, it is tough to relive on a daily basis, coming to the 9-11 Memorial really allows you to witness that rebuilding that's taken place over the last 11 years and, um, you know, connect with other people who were affected that day. So it definitely has its emotional ups and downs, but for the most part, I think it's just inspiring to see, you know, the strength that's, that's here.
Greg Bellema's family visiting from Cincinnati, Ohio is very emotional. Well, this is our first time in New York City, and the first place that we wanted to visit was the memorial, mainly because it's, you know, a historic site. Um, we all, most of our older kids have lived through this. The images that I have uh, from, uh, you know, watching it on TV, and I can tell you exactly where I was at in my office when it happened. We tried to get on the internet, the internet was froze. Uh, just the mayhem, not knowing. Uh, what had happened that day and just to you know a scared feeling so to be here now and uh, just to know and see the names on the walls and, and on you know and see these two fountains is very emotional really. Lizette and Sergio with their two daughters are here from Monterrey, Mexico. This place uh, brings a lot of memories from what we watched in, in, on TV uh, back then and um, we were uh, wanting to see what, what it looks like now and just kind of remind how many people died here and uh, get the feeling of what the U.S. society feels. With millions of tourists visiting the memorial and other monuments and notable places across the country, the security strategies have been improved. Policemen now patrol most public places in different forms, on foot, on bicycles, on motorbikes. On horses. In cars and even in boats. And where need be, restrictions have been placed on movement in certain areas. Times Square, also called the Great White Way, is the brightly illuminated hub of the Broadway Theatre District and regarded as a crossroads of the world. major commercial intersection in Midtown Manhattan at the junction of Broadway and 7th Avenue, stretching from West 42nd to West 47th Streets. Long Acre Square, as it was once called before 1904, is believed to be the world's most visited tourist attraction, bringing over 39 million visitors annually and approximately 300,000 pedestrians daily. Certainly, police presence cannot be ignored here. We're more in tune to the aspects of individuals purchasing something that could be put together as an explosive device. We're more in tune to that. We have uh, officers assigned to uh, what we call the regional task force with the counterterrorism of the FBI. And things that did not, things that were not in place before 9-11 are in place now. The information sharing, the, the the establishment of the joint terrorism task forces around the country and homeland security was not in place and now it is. A lot of different things that are just geared to the observance and gathering of intelligence to try to prevent a terrorist attack. And it is helping to bring more observance to the regular citizens to say this is a little bit out of place. Ellis Island, home to the Statue of Liberty, is another famous tourist attraction in New York. Uh, 
With that freedom, this magnificent, colossal, neoclassical sculpture stands for seems to be under threat and security agencies are not taking any chances. Many restrictions have been put in place around it and many other national monuments. This, John Shane, a former police captain with 29 years experience in active service, now an assistant professor of law and police science at the John Jay College of Criminal Justice, says is fast becoming a reality in America. And many Americans are, are upset about that. The fact that some people from a faraway distant place have disrupted us so much so that we can't enjoy the very monument that stands for the gateway to freedom, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And in, in Washington, D.C. as well, there, there were times when monuments and attractions were closed. If you go down to Pennsylvania Avenue, where the president resides, the streets are all blocked off there. I mean, it looks to me as though it's a permanent closure. The streets that you could drive up and down at one point are now completely closed with armed guards and, and barricades and barriers. You, doesn't, you're not going to get in anytime soon. People began to accept it. Now, there are what was perceived as an inconvenience is really getting to people on people's nerves. Mm -hmm. You know, they go to they go to the airport and they have to show up two hours early for a 30-minute flight, and they're being pat down. They're going through scanners of all times. Well, you pat me down too aggressively. You touch me in an area that what you weren't supposed to touch, uh, and it's grating on people. But it has become uh, an everyday reality in the United States. Parks like the Battery Park, a gateway to Liberty Island, and the view of the Manhattan skyline from Brooklyn now provide recreation sports of some sort to residents and tourists, albeit at a certain price. <laughs> 